what is up youtube knife community how you guys doing here today to do a uh, hrc test results video this is my third take on it uh i get too long-winded talking about this and the video lasts forever so i'm going to try to keep it short and sweet to the point uh i would like to start out today with a uh a pocket dump so for starters I have the Sharp Spot Hank carrying the Doug Ritter RSK MK1, running my tests on it, trying to figure out what it's all about. Back pocket, I got the uh, American Lawman CTS XHP carrying the Lumen Top Tool AA. Uh, so there's my carry for today. All right, so uh, just got this package in the mail the other day. From Kurt, JCoolG192, YouTube, and Instagram. If you guys haven't checked him out, go give him a sub and check out his videos. He does all the testing. Well, not all the testing, but most of the testing for the knife community, HRC tests and stuff. Uh, good guy. I think he's, uh, I know we all appreciate him, but I still think he's underappreciated. So go check him out. Awesome guy. Just top-notch people. I mean, love him to death, just like a brother. So we're going to get this started. I'm going to start out with a, uh, it's a special knife to me, a special knife to a lot of people in YouTube, land, country, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> this is the Bud K uh, Bushcrafter. What is it? The uh, Bushcraft Field Folder. That's it. So uh, it's a... Uh, advertised as high carbon spring steel i think is what they got it as it's nice handles nice walnut handles uh i think it's walnut but anyway it's wood and it's nice um it poked at 58 and 60 very very pleased with that uh that's good for a high carbon especially if it is something close to 1095 it should perform pretty good so we'll stick that back there uh then here's another knife that's special to me. Uh, this came by way of a patty potato pillar giveaway. I'll probably keep this knife forever. It's a, uh, I'm not sure what the make, model, brand. I don't know what the steel is. If any of you guys in the, any of you guys uh, recognize it, leave me a comment down there and tell me what it is. Um, I'm sure that this is not actual Damascus. It's probably an etching, but it's, it's still nice. Uh, and it came back as 58.7. I'd like to say that's good, but I really don't know what the steel is. Like I said, if any of you guys know what it is, let me know. Appreciate it. Okay, so there's that one. Uh, okay, this is a... Uh, a lot of people say they've never heard of this. It's a Curtis Design Boker Knife in 440C. Uh... It came back at 58.8 and 59.1. My uh, understanding is that... Shoot, I'm sorry, guys. That uh, 58 to 60 is good for 440C, so that should be a decent little performer. So uh, there's that. And then coming at you now is going to be a... Ganzo Firebird 7611. This is advertised to have 440C on it. Right there. 440C. You see the divots. There's three. He poked this one three times. Uh, 440C. But uh, Dave over at DJM Blades, he's had a few of these tested. And they're coming back as 8CR 13MOV. So there's a good chance that this one is too because it rock weld about the same. Uh, he's going to release some of that later on. Uh, I hope I didn't spoil something. But there's that one. Now I had uh, four more knives tested. We're going to blow through these pretty quick. Here is a uh, companion in carbon. It poked at uh, 55 7 twice. 
So there's that one. And here's a 12C27 companion. It poked at 55.1 and 55.3. There's that one. And then here is a, there are actually two more Eldry, Eldris, however you want to say it. This one is 12C27. It's acid etched. It poked at 54. This one is also 12C27. It poked at 54, 8, and 55. So, uh, and this sheath right here was made by my buddy Black Bear Custom Kydex. Micah at Black Bear Custom Kydex. Go check him out too. Uh, so yeah, there is uh, four mores. They're all right around 55 HRC. Um, and one reason why I had these tested is I was curious if the acid etching would uh, cause any difference in it. It doesn't. They're all right around the 55 range, give or take half a point or so. So there's that. Now we're going to do some cold steels. Starting out is the Tough Light. This is an AUS-8. And it poked at a uh, measly 56.7 and 57. Um, so 58 is the target range, I think, on most AUS-8. So that's a, quite a bit under that. Not very super happy with that. But what do you do? You're going to carry it and use it. I still like it. Still going to be a good knife for work. <laughs> so there's that one. Then there's three of these pro lights. And there's a reason for that. Here is a uh, clip point. These are 4116. This one tested at 55.3, 55.6. This one tested at, this is a Tonto. Tested at 55.3 and 55.8. So those are almost identical. And then this one was sent by way of DJM Blades, Dave Martell on Instagram. And this is a blue clip point and they're all three in 4116 and this one poked at 51.9 major difference major difference so the plan is is that i'm going to run edge retention tests on this and see how much that dramatic drop makes a difference so that will be a test that will be coming up pretty soon if you're interested in 4116 results stay tuned for that Let's see if i can get all this to fit Uh, there's that okay now we've got a uh, another cold steel s35vn it's a code four and a tanto uh you know range on s35vn should be somewhere around 5860 this one poked at 58.3 and 58.7 most production knives are around 59 something like that so you know i could stand to see it a little harder but i can deal with that i like the knife pretty sweet so there's that and next up we got a monster and this is the voyager xl in aus 10a and my understanding aus 10a range is around 60 61 ish this one hit at 58.9 and 59 I like to see it a little bit harder while well, you do. That's what it is, what it is. So there is the gigantic Voyager XL that will not fit in screen. There it is. Okay, now we have the only bench made in the group. Super Freak. Yeah, love this knife. I put the red thumb stud on it. Mini deep carry. Uh, Kurt's tested five, maybe four or five of these. Every one of them averages out at 63. Pretty awesome. That is some very good consistency coming out of a bench camp. Bit, bit shit. Bench maids camp. Uh, love this knife. It is a performer. I have had two and I've used the snot out of both and they both perform very great. Very great. So there is the bench made super freak. 63 hrc all right now we'll move into a few spider co's 
Here is a customized native with a custom acid stone wash and custom G10 orange and black G10 layered scales. Uh, the clip's been acid etched and uh, back spring and lock back and all that's been uh, acid etched and stone washed. This one poked at 59.1, right there, 59.1. And uh, we know, you know, around 59.60 is where most S35 ends gonna fall. I'd like to see it a little harder, but it is what it is. Love the little knife. Great fifth pocket option if you like to carry in the fifth pocket. So there's that one. Uh, next one, this is uh, one of my favorite spider codes. And this is the earlier run of the crew wear in the uh, diamond pattern scales. I did a lot of customization to this one too. Sanded all the G10 down smooth, uh, bron or and not, shit, flame anode the screws. Uh, I did the liners, acid etch, stone wash liners. Put a new MXG deep carry clip on it. So yeah, the crew wear PM2 that I have from this latest version from Knife Center, it tested at 61.7. This one right here tested at 63.3. Very, very much harder. They, uh, everybody says that they run that, that earlier version a little harder. Uh, definitely a fact. Can't wait to test that and put it against the 61 that I have. Or the 61.7 that I have. There's that one. And here's a special knife. Uh, not because the knife that it is. Just because of the work that Kurt put into this for me. Uh, this is a Sanran Moo. And it is 14C28. And it poked at 57. I really like the handle on this thing. It's a good beefy knife. The clip is a little uh, kind of strange, but it looks like it'll work good. And it's got the glass break breaker on it and a back spacer. Pretty nice knife. I like it. But here's the kicker. He acid etched my logo into it. And then on the other side, it says J. Cool Tested. Love that, man. That's totally awesome. Kurt, if you're watching this, man, freaking love this knife. You're awesome appreciate it brother thank you so yeah he gifted that to me and did all the work to that one that wasn't even my knife so thank you for that kurt and uh now i'm gonna show a couple of hogs uh i don't know if you follow alchemy one on youtube and instagram but neil hogue reached or somehow they got in contact together neil hogue and alchemy one and Neil asked if he could send out some test examples to our group of uh, testers. And Alchemy One obliged him. So Kurt just got done Rockwell testing these. So these, never seen the uh, the coating phase. They never seen the etching. Or they, they didn't even get secondary edge bevels. As you see here, this is a Tomahawk in S7 steel. Uh, it's, don't it don't have its handles, you know, no etch and just bare steel. You can see right here that it's missing secondary edge bevels. I get to put those on for the first time. It's pretty sweet. So this is S7 steel, according to Kurt. Uh, the max on S7 is around 58, and they took this guy to 57.3. So that should be a badass tomahawk. We will soon find out. So I'm gonna lay this one right here. There's the Tommy Hawk. Okay, next up, this is the uh, Hogue EX F01 drop point fixed blade. Same deal, no etching, no coating, no secondary edge bevels. So I get to do that. And this knife is a freaking monster. Look at this tip. Can't wait to test this one, get it sharp and test it. But Kurt poked this one four times and all four tests were 58. Talk about consistency. It's freaking awesome. Uh, big shout out to Hogue for uh, 
sending these examples out. There's a bunch of them. Gerald's got some. I think Steve's getting some. I'm not sure who else, but uh, I know they'll all be tested. They'll all be sharpened up and tested, and uh, you guys will see the results. So uh, if that wasn't enough and the gift from Kurt wasn't enough, uh, I don't know if you guys uh, remember my Maximet Manix, the lightweight gray FRN one. Well, one day Kurt hit me up and he's like, dude, send me your uh, Maximet Manix. You know, don't ask no questions. Kurt wants it, I'm going to send it to him. So I sent him my knife and uh, as he had it for a little while, I kind of caught on that he was going to do some uh, modifications to it for me. So I was like antsy to see it. And then one day he sent me a picture of it just out of the blue. And man, this thing is so killer. So yeah, he got rid of the lightweight frame, the gray FRN, and took it to this. Sweet red G10, smooth G10. That is a actual patina from use. He didn't do anything to the blade. That's the patina that I had on it. But the liners and all that stuff's been stonewashed, acid etched. I put a brand new MXG clip on it. This knife is sick. So yeah, it's days of being beat with a hammer and it's days of being batoned and tip tested and all that. Those days are over for that boy. From now on, it'll be EDC carried and cut. That'll be what, that'll be what happens to that. Um, so if, let's see, I've got one more. I forgot to talk about this one. This is a, uh, this is the top cell shetty. And I gotta admit, guys, this thing was more about bro science than actual science. Uh, I'd heard for years about tops uh, doing the differential heat treat. So I was curious about it. And I even seen a thread on Blade Forms one time that uh, some guy was saying that it was a marketing gimmick. Uh, that tops didn't actually do it. They just did a regular normal heat treat and uh, they just sold them to you like that. So I've always been curious about everything and uh, no exception with this knife. I want to know what it is. I've had this knife for a couple years. I've used it, abused it. It's a hell of a chopper, a great camp, like chopping tool, probably the best chopping tool I've ever had in my life. Love it. So, uh, basically, what I wanted to do was to have Kurt test it wherever he could test it and see where the uh, the hardness range started and, and ended and whatnot, you know. So, uh, so, when Kurt got it, he was going, my original plan, I was hoping he could do all the testing along this flat on the spine, uh, or most of the testing. So, uh, when he got it, you know, his, I've, if you haven't seen his videos, go check out one of his videos. The HRC machine has an anvil that just comes down and pinches the blade. Well, when you get way out here or even way out here, the knife's too heavy. It kind of creeps up on him, you know? So he had to stay within like the balance point, which is pretty close to right here. I'm not going to drop it on top of all these knives to show you, but the balance point is pretty close to right there. So that's where he went with the pokes on it so right here and we know that these are not uh hardcore test results okay so this is like i said this is more about bro science than anything so uh these are all kurt's best guesses the uh along the spine of this knife it's about 20 hrc and then each poke it it raises in between 10 to 15 points on Rockwell. So you got 20 and then say 35, around 50. And he said that his best guess for down here along the edge would be, you know, in that 58 to 60 range. So I'm stoked with that. Pretty happy with that. Uh, any, it don't, wouldn't have mattered how the test results came out. This knife has performed for me. It's done a lot of it's done a lot of wood. I've chopped wood and chopped trees. 
it's been an awesome knife so i wouldn't have cared but i always want to know and that might be some information that somebody else is looking to to gain so i figured i'd throw it out there but there's that uh so that's all the hrc results i have for today uh this video's gotten long enough not half as long as the first two takes i took on it but so i'm gonna end that right here guys thanks for watching sorry it was such a long video thanks for subscribing uh i'll do a video within the next couple days and do an update on my 500 sub giveaway guys appreciate it thanks for all the feedback all the support please go check out kurt go check out micah from black bear custom kydex and uh i'll see you guys on the next one thanks